right, now the new material for today, solving radical equations. Whenever you solve any kind of equation with a variable in it, your goal is always to get x by itself. Your goal is always get x by itself. If I look at number 1, how can I get x by itself? Right now, it's being squared. I need to take care of that. I can take care of that by taking the square root of it. Whatever I do to the left, I must do to the right in an equation. Up to this point in our unit, we've been dealing with expressions, things that do not have equal signs. Now we're talking about equations that do have equal signs. So anything I do to the left, I must do to the right. Square root of x squared is x, which is what I was after, x being by itself. Square root of 25 is 5. If I look back at my original problem and plug back in 5, sure enough, I get 25. If I was to plug a, uh, 5 back in here for x, 5 squared is 25. But think also about the fact that if I put negative 5 in here as well, negative 5 squared, negative 5 times negative 5, is also 25. So whenever you do these square roots of both sides, you need to have both the plus and minus of your answer. Keep that in mind for the rest of our lesson. Number 2. Very similar to any kind of algebra problem you've seen up to this point. We're trying to get x by itself. And the first thing we want to do is add 9 to both sides to get 3x squared equals 45. Follow your instincts. Divide by 3 on both sides, just like you've been doing. x squared equals 15. Now, what did we do in the last problem to get x by itself? We took the square root of x. Whatever we do to the left, we must do to the right. When we do this, remember, x equals both the positive and negative square root of 15. If you start to doubt that, just go back to our original problem. Now let's look at number 3. Again, follow your instincts. Subtract 9 from both sides, leaving negative 2 x squared equals negative 8. Divide by 2, uh, negative 2 on both sides to get x squared equals 4. Take the square root of both sides to get x equals the positive and negative 2. Now, let's look at some more problems. These are slightly different. Similar steps. We're still trying to dig x out of all this dirt. So let's start on the outside. The troublemaker right now on the furthest outside is this squared. So I need to take the square root to take care of that. By taking the square root of all of that, I'm left with an x plus 3 equals the square root of 4 is 2. But x plus 3 equals both the positive and negative 2. So now I have two problems to solve. x plus 3 equals 2, and x plus 3 equals negative 2. Both of those need to be solved so that you'll end up with two possible answers for x. If I subtract 3 from both sides, x equals negative 1. If I subtract 3 from both sides here, x can equal negative 5. Both answers are needed to get full credit for completion of this problem. Number 5. Start digging the dirt away from the outside. 
divide both sides by negative 3. That takes care of this and leaves us only x plus 2 cubed equals 27, positive 27. I want to take the cube root, not the square root, I need to take the cube root now. I want to take the cube root of both sides. Now, this is an odd root, so let's see what happens here. The cube root of something to the third power, as, we kept, as we've seen all throughout the lesson, the cube root of something to the third power just gives us that something back, which is what we were after. The cube root of 27 is 3. Now, in the last problem, we had two things that it could possibly be, positive 2 and negative 2, because both of those things squared could have given us this 4. There's a different thing that happens with odd roots. We don't have both the positive and negative 3's coming out. Only 3 cubed can give us 27. This would have to be negative 27 in order to net a negative 3 when you take the cube root. So for odd roots, we only have the positive 3 come out for this. Finish the answer by subtracting 2 from both sides, x equals 1. Number 6. Start by digging the dirt on the outside. Get rid of this 4. Divide both sides by 4. You're left with x minus 3 squared equals 16. In order to get rid of that 2 power, think of this. If you're having trouble understanding why we're taking the square root of both sides, think of this. Right now we have something like an x squared, and we want to solve for x. It would be great if we could take this 2 power to the 1 half power to leave us with x to the 1 power. So if it helps you, instead of thinking of this as taking the square root, if it helps you to think, take this to the 1 half power, think of it that way. Both are fine. I take the square root, or the 1 half power, of both sides, and I get x minus 3 to the 1 power, just to remind ourselves, equals the positive and negative 4. We have an even root this time, an even root, so we needed to care for both the positive and negative 4. So I will set up two equations for myself x minus 3 equals 4, and x minus 3 equals negative 4. Add 3 to both sides. x equals 7, and x equals negative 1. Both need to be done for a complete and total solution for full credit. Now, we do have special cases. We have some problems that we solve, and we get x equals something, but if we were to plug that something back into the original problem, we would have a false statement. We call that extraneous root. An extraneous root is a root that makes an equation false when substituted back in. Let's see what happens in 7, 8, and 9. Let's solve these as we've been solving them. Right now, we have an x minus 5 to the 1 half power, or the square root of x minus 5. In order to fix something with a 1 half power, in order for us to dig that out, we're going to take that to the second power. Whatever we do to the left, we must do to the right. By bringing this to the 2 power, we can dig out this x minus 5 that radical goes away. That 1 half power goes away when we bring it to the 2 power. We did that on the left, so we must do that on the right. 12 squared is 144. Add 5 to both sides. And right now we're saying the answer to this problem is x equals 149. We need to check to make sure that that's true. We need to check for extraneous roots. We check 
by plugging this 149 answer back into the original problem before I started writing in green. Does the square root of 149 minus 5 equal 12? That's the question we need to answer. Well, this is the square root of 144. Does that equal 12? Yes, the square root of 144 is 12. So we can go back and circle our solution, x equal 149. We check for extraneous roots. This root, or this solution, this root, x equal 149, is not extraneous. Let's check number 8. This is currently 2x plus 4 to the 1 3rd power. How are we going to dig that x out? Well, let's start by getting rid of this power. Let's bring it to a power of 3. So that when I multiply 1 3rd times, times the 3, it'll turn into a 1 and get rid of all of this exponent mess. Whatever I do to the left, I must do to the right. So now I have 2x plus 4, which is what I engineered for myself, equals negative 27, because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. Subtract 4 from both sides. Divide by 2. Right now we're saying the root, or the solution to this problem, is negative 31 halves. We need to check to make sure that this root is not extraneous. We're going to ask the question, is the third root of 2 times negative 31 halves plus 4 equal to negative 3? Is that a true statement when I plug my solution back in? Is the cube root of negative 31 plus 4 equal to negative 3? Is the third root of negative 27 equal to negative 3? Is the third root of negative 27 equal to negative 3? It sure is. So I can go back and circle x equal negative 31 halves as a solution to this problem. Everyone's on the edge of their seat waiting to see how number 9 goes. Surely this is the one where she shows us what an extraneous root looks like. Let's find out. This is a fourth root. This is currently being brought to the one-fourth power. So to get rid of that one-fourth power, let's bring it to the four power. Whatever I do to the left, I must do to the right. 2x plus 1 equals negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's a positive 16. 2x equals 15. x equals 15 halves. That's what we're claiming the solution to this problem is right now. Let's check. You must always show me the check. Is the fourth root of 2 times 15 halves plus 1 equal to negative 2? Is the fourth root of 15 plus 1 equal to negative 2? Is the fourth root of 16 equal to negative 2? It is not. The fourth root of 16 is positive 2, not negative 2. This root is extraneous. Since this is the only root we found for this problem, there is no solution to number 9. Now, stretching our brain a little, we talked a little bit about fixing square roots by bringing them to the 2 power, or fixing things that are to the 1 half power, raising them to the 2 power. What do you think you're going to do to something that is currently at the 3 halves power? If 
we currently have something 3x minus 2 to the 3 halves power, raising it to the 2 thirds power, power of a power you multiply, raising it to the 2 thirds power will help us get rid of these exponents. Whatever you do to the left, you must do to the right. Raise it to the 2 thirds power over here too. Now that we've done this, we can pull this 3x minus 2 out. If something is being brought to the 2 thirds power, which one's the root, which one's the power? The 3 is the root. The 2 is the power. 3x minus 2 equals something we have seen for days on end. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. 3x minus 2 equals positive 4. 3x equals 6. x equals 2. You need to check. You need to check this answer. Three times two minus two to the three halves power. Does that equal negative eight? Four to the three halves power. Does that equal negative eight? The square root of four to the third power, does that equal negative eight? Well, the square root of four is two, positive two, 2 to the third power is 8, positive 8, not negative 8. This is an extraneous root. And since the only root that we found is 2, we have no solution. Take a look at number 11. Think about what power you need to bring that left-hand side to, to get rid of that exponent. Did you say four-thirds? Four-thirds it is. To start digging x out, we need to start by raising to the four-thirds power. Whatever I do to the left, I must do to the right. Leaving us x plus five equals which one's the root, which one's the power? The root is three, third root of 27, the power is four. X plus five equals third root of 27, that's three, to the fourth power. Three times three times three times three is 81. So X equals 81 minus 5, 76. Check. Always check. If I was to put 76 into the original, would it equal 27? 76 plus 5 is 81. 81 to the 3 fourths power they're telling me I need to take the fourth root of 81 and cube it. The fourth root of 81 is 3. Is 3 cubed equal to 27? It is. My root is not extraneous. That's my answer. X equals 76. Number 12. Much like an Algebra 1 problem, we need to start digging x out of there. The first thing you should do is subtract 6 from both sides. If you jumped ahead and started this problem and divided by negative 3 first, the only way that would work is if you were to divide this by negative 3, the 6 by negative 3, and the negative 90 by negative 3. If you didn't do that, you didn't do it right. 
you need to go back and either divide this negative six, or the six by negative three, or do what I'm doing and subtract that six first. So we have negative three times x minus one to the five thirds equals negative ninety six. Now divide by the negative three. Uh, yeah, divide by the negative three. Now divide by the negative three to leave you with x minus one to the five thirds equals positive thirty two. What am I going to do to get rid of this five thirds exponent? Raise it to the three fifths. Power of a power, you multiply. Raise it to the three fifths over here as well. Leaving me with x minus one equals the five on the bottom is the root. The three on the top is the power x minus one equals the fifth root of thirty two is two to the third power. x equals eight plus one. Two to the third is eight. And I need to add one to both sides. Nine. Check. Check to see if nine works in the original problem. Negative three times nine minus one to the five thirds plus six. Does that equal negative ninety? Negative three times eight to the five thirds plus six. Does that equal negative ninety? Negative three times the cube root of eight to the fifth power plus six. Does that equal negative ninety? Negative three times two, the cube root of eight is two, to the fifth power. Two to the fifth power is thirty two plus six. Does that equal negative ninety? Negative three times thirty two is negative ninety six plus six. Does that equal negative ninety? It does. Our root is good. It is our answer. Go ahead and try your independent practice and hopefully I'm back in the room and I can answer questions on last night's homework.